Why thank you? So tell me about you. Oh, okay. I, so I don't, um, this being a blind date interview, I haven't met you before. I don't know who you are. Yep. Um, Surprise. And normally, if ever I was to meet somebody, I would do research. Mm -hmm. I would have you a know, Google store. I would have some bits of information to follow yep. up on. So I'm totally blind here. So you have to introduce me to yourself. Okay. Um, I'm a Scorpio. Uh -huh. No, actually, I'm a Scorpio. Um, <laughs> my name is Maria Lewis. I'm a journalist and author um, based in Sydney. I get to write about whatever I want, which usually leans towards towards movies slash feminist rants. Excellent. So it's like in that sort of spectrum. And um, my first book comes out in January in Australia called mm -hmm. Who's Afraid? And it comes out worldwide um, through Little Brown and Piakas in June. And wow. in Australia, it's coming out through Hachette. So you got a big deal for that book. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. They bought the first two, which is good because it's a, ideally it's a five book series, but obviously like if the first two like flop as hard as Joe Hockey, then, you know, they're not going to, like, do the rest, but it's nah, good. it'll do. Yeah. So, so what kind of genre is it, would you say? Uh, urban fantasy, cool. which automatically makes people go, like, oh, so like Twilight. And you're like, well, no, actually. Um, it's, I guess the easiest way to explain it is people who liked True Blood would probably be interested in it because it's urban fantasy for adults. I think it says some interesting things about the Australian publishing industry because we, in a lot of ways, don't... Um, we don't value the work that comes out of this country and we only recognise it as being quality yeah. when somebody from overseas says, oh yeah, I like that. Especially genre. I think um, yeah. like dealing a lot with like film and film culture, I've seen how like Ausploitation cinema has been this incredible movement, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s that was heralded by overseas as being so important and powerful and had people like Quentin Tarantino championing it and Jamie Lee Curtis and everything. But then in Australia, it was like all oh, this cultural cringe, like, oh, no, that ain't for us. We're all like picnic at the hanging rock, you know, which is fantastic and great, too. But even now, like you look at some of the films that screen Australia green light and it's a lot of dramas. It's a lot of like artsy films in the outback or like, you know, some heroin junkie and stuff like that. And then you have a movie like Wormwood, mm. which comes along and those guys pretty much have to had to finance it off their own back. And it does so well overseas and everyone's talking mm. about it. And or Babadook. Which Babadook, is exactly. It made like um, $300,000 in Australia playing at hardly any cinemas. And then it made its entire Australian run back in five days in France. So it's it's so depressing because yeah. Australia has some really fantastic genre filmmakers and you go across the Tasman and there's New Zealand which has created a whole industry literally out of nothing. Just one guy being like, I'm going to blow people's heads up with this movie called Bad Taste and it's going to blow your mind. Yeah. And now they're, they're like filming Avatar there, they film everything there, it's crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a nice flip side of the coin. Now, yeah. before we get yeah. carried away with conversation, <laughs> yeah. let's talk food. Oh. Now, I I'm have, for it. I have two suggestions. <laughs> okay. Um, we're in the heart of Sydney right yeah. now. But my favourite two places nearby, there's mm -hmm. a Vietnamese place yeah. and there is a pizza place. Okay. Ooh. Um, I like both of those. That's out of good. those two, which okay. would you prefer? Um, can you show me their names? Because if one has a humorous name, I'm more likely to go with that. Unfortunately, they're really straight up. Oh, oh. Miss Chu. Oh, no, Do done. Miss, Miss Chu. Chu. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. And they are very good because they have an app that I can access on oh, my seriously? phone. And I then I can order it from the table and then that will work out nicely. So... Um, you can oh, cool. well, thank click you. on the app and choose what you would like. This is interactive and fun, isn't it? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to do the same thing I do every time. Yeah. Our manservant is going off to get the food. Thanks, manservant! So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reverse we'll those gender roles. Food before long. Get in the kitchen. Um, I read, um, I, I had a week on holiday at the beginning of the year, which was <sighs> super exciting. There should be a thousand of them. And I took a break from things like Facebook mm. and um, all of a sudden magically had heaps of time. Yeah. And so I <laughs> it's amazing what pops up when you're not poking and liking the stuff. Left did that right. happen? Uh, I read The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, Ooh. which um, I, I read it for the first time. I hadn't read anything of his before that. Yeah. And I just bloody loved it. It works in a bunch of ways, and it mm. has these characters who are, you know, mostly icky, but they've got a bit of nice in yeah. them, so you can, you can get on board. And it's really interesting from a gender perspective, because um, the women in it are quite kind of powerful, yeah. even though they're in weak positions a mm. lot of the time, but they're really clever, and so they figure their way out by themselves. I think that's so important. Like, I am a big proponent of this whole idea that 
because there's this whole being this massive push at the moment in the film world but in a lot of like television especially as well to do like this strong female character tm yeah. sort of thing at the moment and i'm a big proponent of the idea that to have a strong female character you don't necessarily need to give her masculine traits like mm. being able to um be on par with men physically or like knock a brother out or anything like that like sometimes a strong female or a lot of times a strong female character can be someone in a floral dress who's a librarian yep. you know it's not the physical qualities that make a character a strong female character mm. and saying that my protagonist and who's afraid is a physically <laughs> intimidating female character but that I, in my defense <laughs> that's because um i was kind of playing with this whole idea of like lycanthropy and werewolfism and the traits of that and that sort of like monstrosity of it all only being given to men it's very rare that you get female werewolves mm. in pop culture because it's this kind of like you know misogynistic outdated sexist ideal that females don't have that kind of monstrosity and that they can't be as like physically horrific is that mm. and that was pretty much the whole reason I was like oh man we don't have like very many female werewolves let's see what we can do about that so then uh, oh, we, we have, have food. some food hey look at this look at you hunting and gathering all right this is pretty what exciting. have we got I think this must be you cool yes it is I think this is me yeah I think this is you Woo. thank you this is me <laughs> interesting you bring up um things like race um, mm. How have you, is that something you've been asked about in relation to your series? Is that something that comes up in the... Well, for sure, because um, my my main character is biracial. Okay. She's, um, she's half Maori and half Scottish, essentially. So she's got the mix of like Maori and Caucasian. And um, that was an interesting thing originally, cause, because for me, in genre especially, in urban fantasy that I would read, I was like, there's just nothing representative of, of me and I'm biracial and I'm not saying that you can't read and relate to stories unless they're the same race of that you are because that doesn't make any sense whatsoever but I just wanted to see some diversity and I was just so yeah. sick of seeing the same like same type of woman and that was size eight white skinned red-headed usually like loves to read usually on the younger end of the spectrum and I kind of wanted to see um heroine that was not only representative physically of all the thousands of different possibilities I saw out in the street every single day. So I um, was wondering when feminism came up to be an issue for you, was it something that you grew up thinking about? Was it something when you entered the workforce? How did it um, come into your... Definitely something I grew up thinking about but not knowing what it was mm -hmm. and not knowing what it meant. When I got older um, and started like journalism and, and newsroom is generally a very male dominated environment. Um, and getting to just see that different kind of stuff and getting put in situations where you're like, oh, that's kind of sexist. And like actually having a word for it. Do you, when you write articles and things, mm. do you get people coming at you online or <laughs> Twitter or wherever else? Yeah, um, especially in the past few years, and that's become really popular. Um, most of the people who uh, reach out to attack me online for stuff they're not based in Australia, they're usually based in America. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't really bother me because I'm just like, what, what are you going to do? Like, what are you really going to do? I just, fine, like, of course, attack me, yes. You and your 19 followers, like, that's really, like, really important. I posted this vine of, like, getting this box where they'd written male tears all <laughs> across the box. And it came to the post office and I went to pick it up. And the post office lady was like, oh, I was wondering when you'd come for this. And I was like, ah. So I made a vine about it and then um, I had like tw 12 comments underneath it. Like, oh, you're a bitch. Oh, you're a cunt. Oh, like blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh, come on. Like, you can't even see the funny side of this. Like, you're just proving my point. Like, yeah. that's it. But yeah, no, that kind of stuff it ha always happens, but I just don't really care. Mmm. This is good. It may, may look like it's meant for four-year-olds, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm four on the inside. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> tell me about what the future holds with your... Are you going to go visit the UK when your book comes out? And yeah, I'm pretty excited about that, to be honest. Um, I'm actually... Like, that's one of the things that's really fun. Um, is obviously, I've like, got a lot more author friends now that have been on the circuit. Is that the right term? I, I don't know. It makes me sound like a rotisserie chicken. Um, but you, you just kind of, like, once you're hanging out in those circles and go to those kind of meetings, you begin to bump into people and stuff. 
Um, and a lot of them are like, oh, I hate doing interviews, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like the best part. Like, all I've been doing is like interviewing motherfuckers for 10 years. <laughs> like, I'm great. Somebody asked me some questions. What's my favorite food? Oh, I've got the answer ready. What's my favorite color? That's a stupid question you should be able to tell. <laughs> and so the first book comes out in January, late January, February. So it's kind of like a waiting game, really, which is difficult for me because I'm an only child. I'm so impatient. <laughs> Well, it has been excellent having you over for Thanks. our surprise dinner. It's been fun. I'm sorry I ate like a hey, cannibal in the Don't apologize. South American These forest. are delicious. Mm. Um, and I might do a little bit of an outro now. What do we reckon? Don't break the fourth wall. What fourth yeah, wall? We've been so fucking quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take all of these though. Yeah, no, dude, you that's why that's why I brought them. And I'll Thank give you your container. Okay, back. you can keep the container, it cost me like two dollars, you know. Get out of Wait. my house. Yeah, all right. I'm and cool. um thank you for coming. Sorry, I've like this chewed. I'm gonna anyway. have to, don't worry about it. I'm go just gonna have to um, show your wonderful jacket to the camera okay. for a minute. Okay, all right, cool. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy because the studs and the chains and stuff. But, this um, is cool. Mm. Yeah, oh, are you gonna put my jacket on for me? Yeah, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> It's We're practically all... dating now. <laughs> you're literally like, get out of my house, bitch. Here's yeah. your bag, the end. Scoot. Scoot. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.